It was September 9th, 1995, and my whole life was about to change. It was the day my team, the BYU Cougars, faced off against a Pac-10 powerhouse, the UCLA Bruins, at home in Provo, Utah. It was a picturesque day. The sun was setting over Utah Lake to the west. The Wasatch Mountains were glowing. The primetime tilt covered the Cougar Stadium field in shadows. 60,000 fans were taking it all in. One of those fans was me. I was seven years old, and it was my first BYU football game. My dad and I were sitting in Portal WW in the south end zone. I remember I was wearing a t-shirt with the Tasmanian Devil in a BYU football uniform on it. It was quarterback Steve Sarkeesian's home debut in front of Cougar fans. The Cougars lost that day. It wasn't a significant game in BYU football history, but that didn't matter to me. I was hooked. That game set my whole future in motion. Hi, I'm Mitch Harper. I'm a BYU insider for KSLSports.com and a radio host on KSL News Radio in Salt Lake City. I've covered BYU football professionally since 2014, and I followed the Cougars religiously since that late afternoon in Provo back in 1995. I love all BYU sports, but BYU football in particular. You could say I'm obsessed. Omar Morgan at the four-yard line. Number one's got to feel like number one right now. Last play of the game. Snap, Tanner. Back pedal, sprint out to the right. Got time, loads up, launches it, goes for the end zone. The ball's in the air, it drops at the goal line. I think he caught it for a touchdown. He got it! He got it! He got it! Touchdown, Mick Matthews! The Cougars win it! The Cougars win it! This year is special in BYU football history because it's the Cougars' 100 year anniversary. It's been a century of historic football moments, some triumphs from the Utah 11. Ball, middle of the field. Collie the lone wide out left. Hand off. Harvey. Harvey 10. Harvey 5. Harvey touchdown! Harvey touchdown! Oh, Into the end zone for the score! The Cougars lead it! Yeah, that Harvey Unga run into the end zone, that was surely a triumph. But there was also the heartbreaks. Here's Mitch Payne. And it's blocked! It's blocked! Utah got back there, got a pull on it, and they will win the game! BYU was once the scrawniest team west of the Rockies. Now they're a consistent winner and preparing for life in a Power 5 conference. Yep, it's been a journey. That's why I created this podcast, to look at 100 years of BYU football history, the pageantry of the team, and the key moments that have shaped the program that is now set for launch into the Big 12 Conference. On this first episode, we're going to talk about what makes this team so special. It's not the big wins, not the stats, not even really the players, although we'll hit some highlights, of course, but the intangibles. Because BYU isn't just a college football team. It's not just a school. BYU is an attitude. It's a culture. It's almost like a religion. Which is fitting, because BYU is owned and operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. BYU football is a lifestyle. And for generations, my family has watched, cheered for, and belonged to this team. So today, we'll look at the story of how one program connected and defined one Utah family. That's my family.
I cover BYU sports professionally, so I don't usually insert myself into a story. But my BYU sports obsession isn't just a job. It's my passion. It all started at that 1995 game with my dad. While most kids my age wanted to be the next Steve Young, maybe Michael Jordan, or even Carl Malone, I realized after that game that I wanted to be a broadcaster. But I was shy, so how would that work? In fifth grade, we were assigned an About Me project, where we had to share what we wanted to be when we grew up. I wrote that I wanted to become the next Brett Musburger and cover BYU football. You are looking live. I love that line from Brett. Musburger was a national broadcaster at the time. He voiced the first big BYU win I experienced as a kid. It was BYU versus Texas A&M in the 1996 Pigskin Classic. So many times in my front yard, I reenacted that play, sliding into the end zone, holding the ball over my head, like I was K.O. Kayla Louie, delivering that knockout punch on the Aggies' wrecking crew defense. I love that game. I love that 96 BYU team. They played in the Cotton Bowl that season and won 14 games, a program record to this day. So I became known as the BYU Kid. Everyone at my school, in my church, and my youth teams, I was known by BYU. And I loved it. That reputation gave me an identity. That identity helped bring me out of my shell. When I was 11 years old, I wrote a report on BYU's 1999 recruiting class. Here are some of the lines from that report with an assist from my oldest son, Max, to share those lines. Fahu Tahi is a running back from Granger High. He might be the best high school player ever from Utah. He's from the same town as me, West Valley City. He's going to be awesome. And another from my report. Luke Staley from Oregon. I read he has big calves and he's buff. Hearing those lines again, I can only imagine how riveted my classmates were at that time. But I leaned into it. Anytime I had to present in school, I talked about BYU football. My confidence grew. And when I was at home, I was always talking BYU football. Especially with my dad. My dad was, is, a passionate Cougars fan. He was excited to share his passion with me from a young age. Like a very young age. When I was two years old, he played Johnny Biscuit's Tiesman rap for me. Biscuit was like Weird Al Yankovic of Utah musicians. My dad's name is Lane. He's a hardworking guy who has been at the same company since he was 17. He's 56 now. He doesn't quit things. And he sure as heck won't quit loving Cougar football. You'll probably know within two minutes of meeting my dad just how much he loves BYU sports. Everybody knows that I'm the crazy BYU fan and that I just love it. And, and every day, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the middle of January or February. It's, it's BYU. Go Cougs. You know, it, it's a lifelong commitment. BYU football has always been known to rock the college football establishment. BYU fans love being in the position of the challenger. We love challenging the status quo. It's one of the big reasons why Cougar fans are so passionate. There are other reasons Cougar fans bleed blue. Many fans are school alums. Other fans are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Many are both. The church has 16 million members. Many are diehard BYU football fans. Not all, but a large majority of BYU's fan base are church members. BYU football is an easy icebreaker 
church members can talk about their football team with coworkers and neighbors while probably also talking about their faith. Football even finds its way into missionary work. BYU football also serves as a platform to strive for greatness. It's a common goal in Latter-day Saints culture. Greatness. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, who is a current member of the church's 12 apostles, probably put it best back when he was the president of BYU during the Cougars' national championship run in 1984. My position at BYU is that whatever we do, we'll do superbly well. If we're going to have an athletic program, then we're going to have a good one. And certainly that's my position on all academic matters and uh, the matters involving our religious heritage. We're just determined to be number one to the extent that we can be in, uh, in all areas of our university life. And we're grateful that, uh, that uh, the football program has brought us one early invisible number one ranking already. My dad is a member of the church, and when he was growing up, he stayed up to date with BYU, the school, because, well, the school represented his faith. But his passion for BYU football began when he was in junior high, and he got to meet legendary BYU quarterback Gifford Nielsen at a school assembly. It was life-changing. It was, like, great to see a BYU quarterback up close and personal and get to hear his thoughts on you know, what what it meant to him to be a BYU quarterback and how important it was in his life. I think if there's any one thing I could say about Western Athletic Conference football is that it is improving each year. I think each year it gets stronger. I think the caliber of young men that come into the WAC Conference to play football are getting better. I think the WAC Conference can hold its own against anybody. Check out that 70s disco music. It really takes you back in time, doesn't it? Just like the 95 BYU versus UCLA game was for me, meeting Gifford Nilsson was a formative experience for my dad. Because BYU gives you something to look forward to. You know, every year it just brings new hope. My dad inherited the love of sports from his dad, my grandpa, Glenn Harper. Like so many of us Harpers, he loved football. But his team was the Utah State Aggies, his alma mater. I never met my grandpa. He passed away at the age of 44 when my dad was only 14 years old. It was a really tough time for my dad. My dad turned to BYU football as an outlet. Gave me that to get away from things and just that joy. As my dad grew up, his Cougar passion deepened. Fall Saturdays were always at Cougar Stadium. He got to see some amazing games. The very first game that I remember going to was that BYU-New Mexico game in 1983. It was the very first game that I went to. And BYU just took the 777 yards of offense against New Mexico. And that game just, it was amazing. I could not believe that a team could move the ball that well. And BYU just was just amazing. That 1983 team was this kind of... When I really started getting to the, every game was like Steve Young's senior year in 1983. And BYU actually played Utah that year and won it like 55 to 7. And that's like, oh, I couldn't have been happier. I won't lie. I'm kind of envious of the games my dad got to see. Somebody said last year the Rose Bowl had the drama, but the Holiday Bowl had the dazzle. And like the 1980 the Holiday Bowl. Back to throw. Cougar fans and know down. it as no the Miracle Bowl. It's up in the air. It is deep. He got to see Steve Young as a BYU Cougar. You heard it from my dad. The first game my dad attended was a BYU football game that saw Steve Young lead BYU to 777 yards of offense. Steve Young! How could you not be hooked by that? The 1984 National Championship. My dad was there at Jack Murphy Stadium with thousands of other Cougar diehards in their annual Christmas retreat to San Diego. A game that delivered BYU and legendary head coach Lavelle Edwards their first national championship. I said going into the game, and I, and, and I believe it, and I'm even more convinced now that uh, 
If you're number one going in, precedent has always indicated that you're number one coming out. And I think anybody that saw the game and saw all the adversity and the problems we created for ourselves and still came back and won the ball game, uh, I just think that has to solidify it even more. Or how about Ty Detmer's run through Miami on his way to the Heisman Trophy? Love the style of offense that BYU had and, and really wanted to be a part of that. So when I made my college decision, uh, this was my first choice, and I was very excited. They, you only see me react to start with, and so I kind of had to let them know, uh, you know that we'd won the Heisman, and then it was just uh, kind of chaos from then on. Simply put, Mitch, it was incredible. Meanwhile, my first experience was a loss. And the first season, BYU didn't go to a bowl game in 18 years. We went to the UCLA game the first game together, and that was a loss. I got you off to a bad yes, start. you did. But actually, being a fan during BYU's tough times made me feel like a more legitimate fan. It hasn't always been trendy to cheer for BYU. And it's definitely not trendy when they're losing. But there I was, a true diehard. Here's a funny side note. When I was growing up, most of my friends' parents would keep their kids in line by threatening to take away a video game. My parents threatened to make me stay home on football Saturdays. And boy, was that effective. I cherished BYU football games when I was a kid, whether they won or lost. There were big home games. There were road trips to see BYU face Pac-10 teams. There's even simpler memories, like going to the library to get on the World Wide Web to see pictures of BYU's new crazy bib uniforms. There it is, the new look for the Cougars in the 21st century. It's still royal blue, but much darker, and it's trimmed in tan. This is a major change. I like the helmet. That's my favorite part, you know, the dark helmet. I like the, uh, the tan stripe. So, I mean, I think it's a good look for us. On another side note, speaking of apparel, when I was in high school, I basically dressed like a coach. BYU Nike polo shirt, Lavelle-style snapback hat, and this wasn't Halloween. The games they've had are just, they're just great memories for myself, for you, our family. Yeah. You know, we always look back and think, you know, we're going to share these moments with our grandkids, with my grandkids, and you're going to share them with your grandkids. And just going to say, you know, I was there. I was at that game. I just, I look back at all the games over the years and just think, oh man, there's, there's Big time wins are just great memories. BYU football defined who I was as a son and honestly as a person. It's also defined my career. When I began taking college classes, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I worked some dead end jobs and got stuck in neutral. But whenever I thought about BYU football, I lit up. That seven year old me knew what I wanted all along. And then I found KSL's podcast, the Cougar Daily Download. It was a aha moment for me. BYU football didn't just have to be my passion, it could also be my profession. KSL News Time 356. It's time for Cougar Tracks. Here's that podcast later turned into Cougar Tracks, the show I now host in the top 25 poll. The Associated Press Top 25 rankings were released on Monday, and BYU snuck in at number 25. It's the 12th time in program history. It was around this time that I met my wife. My wife wasn't a BYU football fan. On our first date, she even admitted she'd only ever been to one game where she rooted for the opponent. And it wasn't just any opponent. It was BYU's rival, the University of Utah. Of course, I fell in love with her anyway. BYU football is also defining me as a father. My wife and I are now raising the next generation of Cougar fans, just like my dad did for me. For a while, my kids weren't into football. They were Pokemon or bus kids. But the Cougar pool eventually took its hold. It's magnetic. While I work the press box, my dad takes my kids to games every fall where they get to perfect their Cougar growls. My oldest son, Max... Lincoln, and my youngest, Ruby. 
My boys have really taken to Cougar football. Max is nine and Lincoln is seven. They love the savvy dance moves from the mascot Cosmo the Cougar or the YouTube highlights of Tyler Algier. Number 25, Tyler Algier. He's good. When he ran and got the touchdown. Against who? Utah State. Like for so many Cougar fans, BYU football is special because it brings our loved ones together. I love BYU football to spend time with my dad and my brother. And for that, BYU football will always be special to me. Go Badgers! Coming up in the next episode of A Century of Cougar Football... Players would come and put their knees or their elbows into the player's neck. 100 years ago, the church wasn't that into the game. We are officially banning football on BYU's campus. So how did the team get off the ground? And who the heck was the real Boney Fuller? A Century of Cougar Football is researched, hosted, and written by me, Mitch Harper. Rachel Miller-Howard also helped with writing and is responsible for audio production and sound design. Mixing by Trent Sell and Rachel Miller-Howard. Special thanks to Madison Hinkhouse and Nathan Dowdle. And executive producer, Cheryl Worsley. A Century of Cougar Football is a KSL podcast.